Great. Well, good morning, church family. It's great to see you. Have a little look around. It's, it's nice to see people, isn't it, after this last little while. On, online as well. Hello. Nice to see you. This is so, so good. And uh, was it Catherine at the back there? Hello. Little baby fast asleep. What's her, is it Elaine? Was that right? Oh, great. Wonderful. Beautiful. So many things have happened since we've, you know, through that crazy lockdown. I mean, you know, babies have been born, all sorts of things have happened. It's wonderful, isn't it? It's great to be back together again in church family. And uh, so grateful for what we've heard already this morning. I trust I'm going to build on that um, in what I want to share. Um, but just thinking, first of all, of church family, I'd like us just to, I'd like to, pray. many of you will know. Um, We'll remember Ian and Jean Hopkins and uh, their, their daughter Karen. And Ian and Jean were founder members here. How long ago was that, Trevor? A long time ago. Quite a while. <laughs> Someone asked me this, mo- this morning how long I've been here. Um, it, it's not really 32 years, is it? Can't be. I mean, I'm not that old, surely. Um, Ian and Jean, bless them. They, they were here many years and serving in many different ways, latterly in King's Care, and uh, it served us so brilliantly. I don't know how long ago they moved away to be closer with, with family and so on, but uh, anyway, a week ago, dear Jean died very suddenly, um, and, uh, you know, it's, that, that's, that's, oh, it's gone to be with the Lord, beautiful, wonderful, well done, good and faithful servant, but when it, when it happens very suddenly, without warning, that, that's, that's, quite, that's hard, that's difficult, and um, so it'd be good to be so we, I said we'd be praying for, for Ian and, and Karen. So many of you will know them. Can we do that? Will you join me in praying for them? And that the Lord would really comfort and encourage at a, 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 a challenging moment. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. We love church family. Thank you so much. So it's beautiful. Every little part, beautiful. Uh, new ones just born. Beautiful, wonderful. Thank you. And People just coming and joining us recently. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Those baptisms last Sunday. Wonderful. Wonderful. And those who've served faithfully over many years. And we just pray for Ian and Karen this morning. Something of a shock. Jean going to be with the Lord very suddenly. Lord, thank you. She's with you. We pray for them, Ian and Jean, that you'd be with them, you'd bless them, you'd comfort them and that they would really have that, a deep sense of, your, of assurance and love, especially as they walk through the practicalities of the next couple of weeks. So we just pray your blessing upon them. As a church family, we, we say thank you for their part in this church family over the years. Bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good o. Well, we're going through the book of Acts, which... I hope you've uh, picked up on by now. And we've, we've seen this, this wonder... Oh, look, a nice little rattle down there. Oh, that looks fun. Sorry. Um, we've seen this dynamic bursting out of the church on the world from being locked away in a room, in the upper room, locked away. Suddenly, they're bursting out on Jerusalem with great, in, with great enthusiasm and joy to the point where hundreds of people come to know the Lord. Beautiful, bursting out. And we see a whole community being birthed, people who who are just opening their homes and their lives and their resources to one another, just a beautiful community in the Lord. And it's, it's, it's precious. And now, we, 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 Marcus was... Uh, I'm actually going quite close to where Marcus was uh, two weeks ago, uh, he was speaking from chapter uh, 12, chapter th- beginning of chapter 13, um, and this is sort of the, this is at the moment when this, this fledgling, well, it's now grown, obviously, but this, the, the, the gospel is about to burst on the world. You've probably heard of Paul's missionary journeys, right? 
Well, that's what's happening here. Marcus was preaching from the beginning of chapter 13 about Antioch, the fact that there were prophets and there were teachers and there was this wonderful um, mixture of people in the church there, the dynamic of church family, the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is, it's poised for bursting out in the world. And now, I, I, and we're going to look this morning um, a little bit at Paul's first missionary journey. Okay, there were three of them. The first missionary journey. um, And I want to try and give you a sense of uh, the the challenge of it. It was not simple. There was a hostile environment. How did it happen? How did this church burst out in the world? Right, let's have a look. Is there a map there? It's probably a bit naff. I don't know if you can see it. I I tried to find the best map I could. Can it go up there? Can we get my map? Oh, look, there you go. Oh, oh, that's not bad, is it? Okay. It's a, now, let me try and talk, talk you through it. Can you see Syria over there? Up towards the top there, you've got Antioch, right? And the blue line is the first missionary journey. It start off from there over to Cyprus. That's a couple of hundred miles, which is where John and Helen were for many years. Uh, John, on your feet. Come on. Let's, this is John. Is Helen with you? You've lost her again. She's with her mum again. John, this is John. They, how long were you in, in, in Cyprus? 11 years. They, they were here yonks ago. You can, you can yeah, do sit down. That's John, and he's married to Helen. They were very much part of the church family here. And then uh, they, off they went to Cyprus. And that, so that's where they were. So the first missionary journey, now why don't you get a hold of this? Paul, he, he's, he's in Antioch, Cyprus, 200 miles, okay? Something like that. Across Cyprus... Okay, and, and, and then it nips up there to, to uh, it, says, it, it's, it says Pamphylia in that, but actually it's, it, it's Turkey, okay? So up to Turkey, um, that must be another sort of, I don't know, 300 miles or so in a boat, you know? Um, okay, and then he does this journey around there. Okay, see, follow the blue line around to, Derbe, to Iconium and around there, Derbe, and then back, and then around and back home to Antioch. Now, that is about, I think I read somewhere, 1,200 miles. Okay, he hasn't got a four before. He's got two by two. He, he's, you know, he's, it's not easy. You know, and and as, I'm, as I, I want to read, I can show you here. You, I mean, one, I mean it's, it's, it's hard. Um, the, the first missionary journey is chapter 13, and... Um, you can read there at the end of chapter towards the end of chapter thirteen. Um, in uh, sorry, I, I, uh, where are we? Okay, we're in we're in Poseidon Antioch, um, Pisidian Antioch, okay, which is in Turkey, and there's a bit of a riot going on. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas. They expelled them, so they're being they're being they've got to leave town. But what does it say? Last verse: the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. How do you do that? How does that happen? And then the next place they go to, he's beaten up, and then in verse 19, Paul was dragged outside the city thinking he was dead. And then it says, he got up the next day, and on they went. And how do you do that? We're living in a hostile world, right? It, it's, how, how can, sometimes we think, oh, it's difficult. How, how can our mission succeed? It's a tough world. Well, Paul's first missionary journey. By the way, his second missionary journey, he got up into, he got across into Greece, well, Macedonia and Greece. That was about over 2,000 miles. And then his third missionary journey was even more. This dear man with a passion for Jesus. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's go back to what Marcus shared that um, two weeks ago. And we're in chapter 13, and I'm going to read a few verses. Okay. Church, verse 1 of chapter 13. In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And this is, this is what I want to preach from. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me... Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I've called them. So after they'd fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and they sent them off. 
And I've called what I'm saying this morning, worship, the fuel of our mission. Worship, the fuel of our mission. They were worshipping in the presence of the Lord. And in the, in, with the, 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 one, the gifts of the Spirit, there were the, the, there were the prophets, the teachers, they were worshipping, and the Holy Spirit arrested them and spoke and thrust them out. This is really, this is really special. Now, look, first, my first point is this. Look at that little phrase there. Set apart for me. There you go. That's where mission starts. People who are set apart for the Lord Jesus. Wherever you are, wherever you're working, wherever you're living, a sense of set apart for Jesus. Oswald Chambers, some of you might have heard of Oswald Chambers. Chambers, we have, I don't got any, it might be some of his books. I didn't go and look. But he, 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 uh, he says this, the bedrock of Christianity is personal passionate devotion to Jesus Christ. I like that. Do you like that? Can I say it again? The bedrock of Christianity, that's where it all comes from, flows from, is personal, passionate devotion to Jesus. Kind of links in with what we've been hearing this morning. His voice, John was saying. Yeah? And so... Mission, missional service, our witness, uh, it, 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 it comes out of us being available to the Lord. It comes out of us on a daily basis. Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. So set apart for me. And then he says, for the work. Okay. Actually, I've missed something out. This is a good quote. The question of whose we are is always more important than the question of where we are. Okay, some of you might think, oh, I've got a call. God, one day God's going to take me to some faraway place. And that, that's, that's great. That's fine. It's wonderful. No, it's not just fine. It's great. Wonderful. But don't wait for that. It's, it's more right where you are. The question of whose you are, whose you are, is more important than where you are. Whose are you? Who, who do you belong to? Who are you living for? For the work, they're not going on vacation or a, a jolly. They're going on the Lord's service. And so are you and I, wherever we are. We're going on the Lord's service. Now, just to say, Penny here is off to Kurdistan next week. Hey, again? <laughs> no keeping her down. She's off to Kurdistan just a week this time, just a little one. But bless her, bless her. We, in fact, let's pray for her now, shall we? Lord, we pray for Penny. She goes to Kurdistan next week that you would keep her, that keep her safe, that you would bless her, that she'd be a real ray of light, sunshine, blessing as she goes to serve there, the medical team. You bless her, keep her safe, and use her for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Where are you going next week? Might not be Kurdistan. Might be going into school, into, into college. Lord, do you know, but it's, it's the same. It's whose you are that matters. I heard the other, I heard, do you know, I heard recently, I, I think Joe Oldfield's off to Argentina for a, for, a, for, to, for a mission trip. We must pray for him that he really is a, you know, God uses him and opens his eyes and, and speaks to him and, bless, and makes him a blessing. Where are you going next week, okay? Ben and Sarah, who we were saying farewell to a while ago, they've gone off there. They are in Frankfurt, church planting. Where are you going next week? You might think, oh, it's not. Hey, wherever, it, it, it's where God's put you, into school, into college, into work. Okay. So after they had fasted and prayed, why do they fast and pray? Because it's warfare. We've got an enemy who wants to, to snarl us up and mess us up and stop us, right? You know, the enemy, you, 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 it's pretty obvious nowadays that we've got an enemy. Look around the world. Look at the, look at the evil, the suffering, the pain. Look at the evil. We've got an enemy. You've got an enemy. Wherever you're going this week, he wants to shut you up, shut you down. He does. 
That's why we pray and fast. And at the end of my, well, if I remember, when I finish preaching this morning, I want to pray for us wherever we're going this week. That we'll go there, go wherever we're going, as people set apart for the Lord Jesus. Are you up for that? Oh, okay. One or two. That's encouraging, sort of. You see, we, we go reliant on the Holy Spirit to, to help us because we're, we're pretty weak. And so we need the Holy Spirit. Um, but also, you know, in a profound way, the whole of the church in Antioch was going with Paul and Barnabas. They, they were with them and they were praying for them and they were part of the mission. Beautiful. But the point I want to make this morning is that worship is the fuel of our mission. That's what fuels your witness wherever you go this week. Now, let me ask you this question. See, why do we want people to, to become Christians? Why do we want people to become Christians? Well, you, you might say, well, so that they, they know the forgiveness of God. Yeah, yeah, we do. We want people to, to know forgiveness. So no condemnation. Oh, the slate wiped clean. Oh, forgiven. Beautiful. Yes, we want people made to feel forgiven, but, but that's not it. That, 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 that's, that's the beginning. So we want people to be forgiven. Why else do we want people to become Christians? Well, um, so that they've got a hope and a future, so that they, they don't uh, rot in the grave and face the judgment. They've got a hope and a future. Well, yes, yes, that's part of it. But that, that's not the real reason. What's the real reason we want people to become Christians, to be forgiven and to have a hope and a future? What's the real reason? Let me give you a clue. Augustine, the fourth century, a while ago. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in you. Did you hear that? We've been made for fellowship with the Lord. We've been made to... To walk with the Lord in the cool of the day and the beauty of his wonderful creation. Oh, Lord, you know, that's what you were made for. That's why we want people to become Christians. To know the Lord. To enjoy him. That, and the thing is, if you're not enjoying the Lord, how on earth can you lead someone else to enjoy the Lord? Do you get the idea? Worship, the fuel of our mission. So that's Augustine. J.B. Phillips, he's, uh, I don't know when he, he he's, he's, not, he's not alive now, but he did a translation of the New Testament. He puts it this, well, you know this phrase. There's a God-shaped vacuum in every one of us that only God can fill. That's why we want people to know the Lord Jesus and be forgiven and have a hope in the future, that they'll know the Lord, that they'll enjoy him, that they'll spend eternity with the Lord. Yeah? Do you get it? Do you get the idea? Westminster Catechism. Catechisms were ways of people learning truth. And they were little sort of training routines, and there were sort of questions and answers. It's not a bad way of teaching, teaching children, is it? Ask a question, uh, get an answer. So that you probably recognize this one. Most, 17th century uh, question. What is the chief end of man? Answer, man's chief end? is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Have you heard that before? You've heard that, right? You've heard that. So if you're not enjoying God, how on earth can you help other people find their way to enjoying God? Does that make sense? Worship is the fuel of our mission. Okay? John Piper, he's sort of a contemporary. He's... Uh, uh, put, there's a quote I think can go up on the wall. Listen to this. I love this quote. The goal of our mission is to bring the nations into the white, hot enjoyment of God's glory. I like that. Do you like that? I really. That's what mission's all about, to bring all the nations into the white, hot enjoyment of God's glory. Not just to see people forgiven. Oh, great. Clean sheet. That's wonderful. That's only a means to an end. 
That means you've been forgiven for a greater purpose. You've been given a hope and a future for a greater person, for pur- 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 purpose. Do you see? I love that. The goal of mission, the white hot enjoyment of God. Oh, yes. The goal of missions is the gladness of people in the greatness of God. This challenges me. Am I enjoying God? Am I? Are you enjoying God? Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Wonderful. There's another quote. Go go on, next slide. Let's put the next one up. I love this. This is another one. There you go. But worship is also the fuel of our mission. See, I pinched my title from John Piper. All right. I pinch things from most people. Passion for God in worship precedes the offer of God in preaching. And listen to this. You can't commend what you don't cherish. That's powerful, isn't it? You can't commend what you don't cherish. Are you enjoying the Lord? Are you so quick to get that squeezed out of your life? It's so, so easy to become nominal. Beautiful. The p- passion for God in worship precedes the offer of God in preaching. So worship, what is, we're going to do some worship in a minute. I'm, we're going to go for it in a minute. Part of my preaching, okay, we're going to worship in a minute. So what is worship? See, we're all, we're all by nature, worshippers. We're all worshipping something. The question is, what is it? What are you worshipping? And here's the scary bit, or can be scary. What you worship affects you. It affects what comes out of you. It affects what you are. Now, you don't need, let me give you a couple of illustrations. If you worship money, that's going to affect you, your personality, right? If you worship money, it's going to affect your personality. You're going to be just driven by must have, must have, must have. You're going to get anxious when the bank rate falls and when things. If you worship money, it'll affect the kind of person you are. I'm not going to, now, you, you just apply that to all other kinds of things that you can get addicted to, right? And it can wreck you. Let me give you a, I'll give you a safe one that is very kind of pretty obvious. If you're addicted to cake, you're just going to get fat. You are. You're going to get fat. It'll affect your life. Now, just put in anything else that you might be addicted to that you're chasing after. It's going to affect your life. It will affect you. Do you, get, do you get the idea? We were, we were made, this God-shaped void. And it, it, so the question is, what are you worshiping? We're all worshiping something. And, and, and Jesus said, look, you, the truth is this. You can't worship God and stuff, mammon. You've got to choose. You, what's the, which is the one that you're focusing on? Really, really, really important for us. It affects the outflow of your life. Um, you know, in the Old Testament, the prophets used to say, that, you know, why are you worshipping this lump of wood? You, you know, you, 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 you've got to become like this jolly thing, you know, an idol or whatever. And, and when you stop and think about it, you know, I don't know, it may, it, maybe it's possessions or a, a car or, or even, dare I say, a relationship. Why are you worshipping this? If, 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 if this is the main thing in your life, it's, it, it's not going to deliver it will wreck you. Seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Okay, so this, that's worship. So my last point is this, the power of worship. Okay, now listen. Worship is not a side issue. It's not sort of, oh, you know, I know some people are really into that. I'm not really into, wor-. well, you are into worship. I've just explained, we're all worshiping something. Okay, we're, we're worshippers. And so, things, here's, here's the thing, things happen when we worship. Things happen. I've said this so many times here, you've heard me say it so often. When we start to worship, the Holy Spirit in us, we've, we're people of the Spirit, we've been born in the Spirit, haven't we? And hopefully we've been filled, baptized, flooded with the Holy Spirit. And when you start to worship, The Holy Spirit in you says, oh, that's what I do. I glorify Jesus. 
And he rises up in you and encourages you. Things happen when you worship. We've seen in the book, well, we will see in the book of Acts, when people worship, think of Paul in prison in Philippi. When, when, when people worship, the lights go on and the doors open. And maybe you are facing some dark situations and maybe there's some doors you need to see opened. Dear, dear friend, learn to worship. The lights go on when you worship. The lights go on. It's what the Holy Spirit does, turns the lights on. I've told this story. Oh, Lord, I must, we're going to, I'm telling too many stories, aren't I? Okay. Joe, you'll appreciate this one. A few, some years ago, Angie and I went to Barcelona, a wonderful city. And we went one evening to the, what's it called? The Sag- La Sagrada de Familia, Gaudi's thing. How many have seen that place? You've heard me say this many times. We got there in the evening, and I looked at this sort of, you know, I wasn't too impressed. Oh, all right. Yeah, all right. Okay. And then the floodlights went on. Wow. I mean, if you've ever seen it, you know, instead of gorgoyles, it's got grapes and vines and fruit and color. I mean, it's amazing. And the, it's, anyway, the lights went on, and, and suddenly we're captivated. Folks, that's what, when you start worshipping, the Holy Spirit turns the lights on Jesus and you just start to get overwhelmed. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's why it's so important we're filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why we, it's important we go on getting filled with the Holy Spirit. So the lights go on and we get excited. Do you need the lights to go on? Maybe you do. It can happen this morning. Jack Hayford, some of you may have heard of this name, Jack Hayford, uh, lovely spirit-filled man. He says this, I love this quote. Worship is our primary ministry. So this is a fundamental truth. Reading your Bible, serving, witnessing are extremely important, but our ministry to the Lord through worship is what brings life and freshness to all those other aspects of our walk with the Lord. Do you get that? Shall I read it one more time? I've got time. Go on, I've got to read it again. Worship is our primary ministry. This is fundamental truth. Reading your Bible, service, witness are extremely important. But our ministry to the Lord through worship is what brings life and freshness all those other aspects of our walk with the Lord. Worship is important. It really, really is. I know there's obviously the, the, the Bible, Romans 12 speaks about the whole of our lives being worship. And yes, there is that sense in which everything we do, it's not just when we sing, but the whole of our Lord, it's an offering to the Lord, all of our lives, everything, our jobs, our, everything. But the, at the heart of it all is our devotion to Jesus. That's what fuels our witness and our, min, uh, our mission. There's a clue in the in this in the phrase we use, having daily devotions. There's a clue in there. It's the word devotion. Listen, your daily devotions. And not a competition to see how many chapters you can read. They're not. It's about your devotion to the Lord Jesus. Do you get it? Do you, do you, this, this is so, so important. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm just like you, really. I, I, we're all the same. I'm like you. I, I, I wake up um, quite often feeling a bit, bit naff and a bit whatever, you know, um, and as John said in that, what he brought earlier on, there's so many voices that can crash in on you. You know, I hope you don't look at the news the first thing you do when you wake up. I, 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 go on, I'm not ask how many hands, but I bet a lot of you do. On with the eye of the phone, check the news headlines. That's a killer. Why on earth do you want to depress yourself first thing in the morning? There's a time for. Obviously, we're not idiots. We want to know so we can pray. But first, it's about your devotion to Jesus. That sets everything else in its place. 
So uh, what do I do in the morning? When my th- I, I make a cup of tea into my loft armchair and, um, and, and, and worship tape. Worship, not tape. Playlist. Tapes, do you remember? Cassettes. We worship, I worship and something happens. The lights go on. You need that. Musicians, come up. We're going to do a song. I haven't finished preaching, but we're going to do a song. I don't know what we'll do later on. but Folks, this is so important. We're, we're doing a daily devotions on uh, King's Daily at the moment. We're going through the Re- Revelation, and we're going through the, uh, the letters to the churches. And in fact, this, on tomorrow morning, we're starting on Laodicea. Laodicea. And you probably know what, what's going on with the church in Laodicea. You, and it kind of challenges me. I mean, you can join us tomorrow, but just here, you know, the, this is what the Lord says. I know your deeds. You're neither hot nor cold. This is the Lord Jesus walking through the church and he's saying to them, yeah, I know your deeds. You're doing this stuff. But you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. Because you're neither, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Oh, God. Oh, that's just, that's just really hard. But look what he says a couple of verses later. Here I am. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. Just let me in. Let me in. Let me in. And if your devotion to the Lord is, is gone, here's the Lord's word to you. I stand at the door and knock. You haven't got to climb a mountain. You haven't got to scale a wall. You've just got to open the door. Devotion. 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 We're going we're gonna to sing a song now. And by the way, you know, with, 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 with worship songs, I... I we a lot of us, some of us, ping worship songs around to to bless each other and and uh, encourage one another. You know, um, <laughs> a few of you, you know, we we, we do that. And um, Johnny's one of them. He, he he pings me a song. Or, you know, he, he, he and he pinged me one the other day. And we're going to sing this song. The words actually should come up. I've put them on the end of my slide. So, but here's the thing. You see, when we sing. As, Chris, as, as a church family, there are times we sing great truths. And it's, we, we, we must do that. We, we sing, you know, great is thy faithfulness. Whoa, yes, please. We, we want to declare great truths. That's part of what we do. But we also need to express our worship, our devotion to the Lord. Really, really, really important. For all the reasons I've just said. Because it's all about enjoying it. Him. And if you're not enjoying him, you can't, you can't share him very well with people around you. And in, in, so in worship songs, you want the tune to be simple. And I'll get musicians to play this tune through. And you want the words to be simple. So it can just, it just, you, it, it, it just allows you to meditate and sing and allow your devotion to the Lord to flourish. Do you get that? Do you get it? Do you get that? It's really, really important. So that's what I do every morning to stop my heart and mind going down the drain. I'd rather it went to heaven. And you need that too. So are the words there? Clickety-click, ping-ping on the last slide. There they are. Now look, look, you can't get much simpler words than this. Okay, here we go. The first part is you are Alpha and Omega. Book of Revelation. It's the only place where that phrase is used. Lord, you're the beginning and you're the end and everything in between. It's all yours. Alpha and Omega. You're awesome. Okay. You're Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You're worthy to be praised. Is that difficult? Can you manage that? Okay. And then the sort of next little bit. We give you all the glory. We worship you. You're worthy to be praised. Do you want to play it through? Do you want my keyboard? Just give them the, give them the melody. Just, just hear the melody and, the, and we'll... I'll kind of sing a bit so you can. 
Okay, try it. See if you can do it. Can you manage that? You are Alpha and Omega. We worship and adore. You are the wrong worthy to be praised. Let's try it again. I'm just going to go off a bit here. We love you, Lord. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. And we're going to stay with this refrain. And I, I want you, if, you, if you're dull 
if your devotion to the Lord is dull, I want you just to, you might want to lift your hands to, to the Lord. It's an expression of our openness and needing the Lord. And maybe you need to just say, Lord, I'm sorry. My, I'm dull. Forgive me. Would you come and refresh me this morning? I, I really need my devotion to be, to be just a fire lit again. So you might need to express that to the Lord. He's knocking at the door. He wants to bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you Jesus, I, I want to pray for us this morning that you would be, be warming our hearts, Lord. Lord, would you warm our devotion for you, Lord? If we're lukewarm, Lord, oh God, God forbid that we're just lukewarm. Maybe we've never known that, that depth of devotion that you want us to have. Lord Jesus, we pray this morning we we want to know you we want to enjoy you we want to have something to share with people that the, the joy of the lord the our devotion to you and we say holy spirit we need your help we we pray would you come and warm our hearts please we pray for us as a church family lord that that you'd warm our hearts our devotion to you may it never be said of lord as you as you walk amongst us as a church family may it never be said of us you're lukewarm you're lukewarm. Please forgive us, Lord, if we've gone off the boil. Warm our hearts, Lord, I pray. Warm our hearts, Lord, I pray. We'll just try that little song one more time. I just want to praise you. I want to lift my hands to say that I love you. You're everything to me, Lord. I just want to
Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, please, we open the door. We open the door. We say, come, come, Lord. Lead us into a deeper level of devotion with you than we've ever had before. Lord, the world needs to see people that love you. The world, our neighbors need to see people who know your joy. People who are enjoying you, Lord, in these dark days. Lord, we open our lives to you. Please come, I pray, in Jesus' name. Do take your seats. Parents, you need to go and find your children, I think. Sorry, I've overrun. Thank you to our lovely musicians. They, they, they serve us well, don't they? They put up with my funny ways. Dear church, as I, as I close, let me just say, you know, it's part of our history as a church family. So back in the 1970s, there was a, what we call an awakening. There was an awakening, and, we, and the Lord showed us afresh worship. You know, we'd been singing. I mean, hymns are great. Love to sing hymns, truth. But back in the 70s, it was a renewal time. That's how this church began, in a time of renewal, when the Holy Spirit just began to give us a hunger, a thirst. And we, you, you find little pockets of people, little after meetings, because it wasn't quite the done thing in the main church meetings, you know. But all over the place, little groups just wanted to worship. And that's, how we, that's where we began, a time of renewal in this nation that just swept right across the nation. And uh, it, it we'll show our age a bit if I ask for a show of hands who was part of that. But, folks, it was precious. That's where we began. And some of it, we don't want to let go. We, we don't want to let go. And, and I, I do feel more than ever it's, it's a time. It's a time for us. It's dark in the world, isn't it? It's dark. And there's so many things that can discourage you and make you fearful Tomorrow morning when you start your day, don't go and look at your news first thing. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. And if you've got that beautiful gift of tongues, if you've ever had that lovely gift of tongues, it's a controversial word, tongues. Let me change it and say this. Beautiful heavenly prayer language. That's what it is. Beautiful heavenly prayer language. Use it. Stir up the gift. And uh, get a good playlist on your, wherever, however you, or your, get your CDs out, or whatever. I'm, I'm going on a bit. I feel, it's, I feel God's speaking to us. And I, um, I've been struck, as I say, we're starting on King's Daily. To, we, we, I, I, I've already done tomorrow's on Laodicea. And it just struck me, the, the Lord Jesus, in that prophecy in Revelation, it's that Jesus is walking amongst the candlesticks. He's walking amongst the churches. He's walking amongst our church. And I think, Lord, what are you saying to us as you walk around the rows? Are you saying you're lukewarm? Oh, God, please no, please no, please no. But if he is saying that, he's also saying, I'm knocking on the door. Open it to me. Are you, are you going to share something, Joe? Is that why you're there? Come and share. <laughs> now, Lord, may that be so. Please, I pray for healings today in this place as we have worshipped. Some surprised, surprising healings that we'll hear stories of in the days ahead. And Lord, I want to pray for everyone here, wherever they're going this coming week. It might not be Kurdistan, but we do pray for Penny as she goes there. But I pray for everyone. Lord, would you send us with the joy of the Lord? May our devotion to you be there. So I pray for everyone here, Lord. I pray the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord make his face to shine on you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace in a troubled world. Bless you, dear church. And, uh, yeah, devotion, the fuel of our mission. Have a great week. We've overrun slightly. Sorry. Do I need sorry? Oh, oh there's announcements and things. Marcus. No? Do you want to say anything? All right. Okay. Look at the website, things like that, and um, look after one another, won't you? Encourage one another. God bless. It's been lovely to see you this morning.